A lot of YouTube discussion always focuses on big, mega SHTF events. But to me, the foundation of prepping is prepping for everyday SHTF. And part of that is prepping for the holiday season. Stay tuned. I think most of us remember one of the most iconic holiday movie scenes, I think of all time, when Clark Griswold in the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation finally succeeds in lighting the family Christmas lights, all 25,000 of them. According to the National Fire Protection Association, 860 home fires are caused by holiday decorations each year. An additional 210 home fires are caused by Christmas trees per year. So if you figure that, it's only two per state. It's not real high. So follow these steps that are provided here from the electrical fire prevention site. Make sure all your extension cords and electrical decorations are marked for proper use. You know, are they outdoor or are they indoor only? And the same with your lights. And your outdoor electric lights and decorations should be plugged into circuits protected by ground fault circuit interrupters. That's real important. And before you go through all the trouble of putting up your lights, inspect your lights and decorations and extension cords. Are there any damages? And also, of course, make sure they light before you put them up. Now, this is something that I sometimes forget to do, and it's a bad idea because, like I said, we have a real Christmas tree. I sometimes forget to turn off all of our lights when I go to bed at night. You really should have all of your Christmas lights off before leaving your home or going to sleep. And of course, like Clark Griswold, you want to avoid overloading electrical outlets with too many decorations. Now, something I didn't realize until I researched this is that you're never supposed to connect more than three strings of incandescent lights together. And I think many of us have done that before decorating our Christmas trees. Of course, you want to water your Christmas tree daily because that will help prevent a fire. And you want to keep all decorations at least three feet away from heating equipment or an open flame. Your extension cords should be from an approved national recognized testing lab. You have to be careful about Asian knockoffs. And I'm just putting thing here about using your extension cords properly because I think most of us use extension cords in our Christmas decoration. It says there are roughly 3,300 home fires that originate in extension cords each year and they kill 50 people and injure 270 more. I guess the problem is that extension cords can overheat and cause fires when used improperly. So, don't plug one extension cord into another and make sure your extension cords are rated for what you're using them for. Keep all your outdoor extension cords clear of snow and standing water. That's something I find hard for my uh, chicken water. Do not overload extension cords. Always inspect them for damage. Do not nail or staple and do not run them through walls, doorways, ceilings, or floors because then the heat can escape. And never use the three-prong plugs with outlets that only have two slots. And don't cut off the ground pin to force a fit. Now a little bit more about Christmas tree fires. One out of every three home Christmas tree fires is caused by electrical problems. And although these Christmas tree fires are not common, when they occur, they are more likely to be serious. On average, one of every 31 reported home Christmas tree fires results in a death compared to an average of one death per 144 total reported home fires. And what another problem is that a heat source is really just too close to one in every four of these Christmas trees. I saw this picture on the internet and it really makes you think because every year candles cause more than 10,000 home fires and 5,000 of those, about half, are in December. So you really, really have to be careful. And guess what? 38% of those home fires start in the bedroom. So I would think that has nothing to do with holiday decorations. 
There's some simple safety rules. Never leave burning candles unattended or sleep in a room with a lit candle. Keep candles out of reach of children. Make sure your candles are on stable surfaces. And of course, don't burn candles near trees, curtains, or any other flammable item. And if you have to use candles, there are those ones now that look like real candles, but they actually are battery operated. That is much safer. And always check your smoke alarms. Make sure they're working. Have fire extinguishers within reach and make sure all your family members know where those fire extinguishers are and how to use them. Another popular holiday movie is Home Alone. And that poor little boy has to deal with two robbers that are trying to get in and take things from the house. Well, holiday theft is quite common. Um, there's something called porch pirates, and that is people who you're getting deliveries from Amazon or wherever, and they're on your porch because you're at work, and people come and take your packages so you don't get what you wanted. Um, also, you have to be careful of emails that are fake for real charities and door-to-door -door solicitors for charities that don't exist. And of course, don't put on your Facebook that you're going to be gone for two weeks to visit family during the holidays or whatever and let everybody know that your house is unattended. If possible and you're going to be gone, get a house sitter or at least notify your sheriff department that you're going to be gone so somebody can check on it regularly. This time of the year, it's popular to have drinks with people, you know, be it eggnog or holiday cheer. And of course at New Year's, a lot, a lot of people drink and it's combined with parties. But really, really be careful. Don't drink and drive, you know, call Uber, have a designated driver, be safe. During Christmas and New Year's, two to three times more people die in alcohol-related crashes than comparable times of the year. And of course, this time of the year too, we have to be careful because family gets together and sometimes things get a little tense and alcohol can always make it worse. Some things that normally won't come out of somebody's mouth does because they've been imbibing. So don't overdrink at family parties either so you can all have a nice time. And I want to deal with a couple myths because you know I hate myths. Another holiday movie, It's a Wonderful Life, deals with a potential suicide. And I've always heard that during the holidays, people get depressed and there's a higher incident of suicide. But guess what? That's an urban myth. According to the CDC, November and December are the months with the fewest suicides. And the other thing is, a poinsettia is not a poisonous plant. It could make you slightly sick. If a child weighed 50 pounds, he would have to eat over 500 poinsettia leaves to reach an even potentially toxic dose of compounds. So no one has ever died from eating a poinsettia plant and really it could make your cat or dog slightly sick, but again, it really is not even poisonous for them. What you do have to worry about is mistletoe and holly. As always, try your best to prepare for this holiday season but also enjoy it. This is Prepper Potpourri saying please subscribe, share the knowledge, thumbs up if you like this video.